Good afternoon. This is Jim Ray, Road to the Autry Masters. We're talking with artists from the Masters of the American West exhibition at the Autry Museum in Los Angeles. Uh, today, we are very pleased to have with us Gladys Roldan de Moraz. Uh, Gladys is a, um, is a painter in um, San Antonio, Texas. She originally comes from Monterrey, Mexico. Uh, she does some beautiful subject matter uh, related to the culture of Mexico. And she's uh, done a, a beautiful painting uh, along those lines that we'll look at uh, a little bit later. Gladys, welcome. Thank you uh, so much for joining us today. Thank you, Jim. I'm very happy to be here. Thank you for this invitation. We're very happy to have you here. Gladys is new to the uh, the Masters exhibition. We, uh, I actually knew about her work uh, before we saw her at the uh, the Briscoe Museum, the Night of Artists exhibition. There, uh, had an opportunity to meet her there, and then when we saw her at the Prita West in Oklahoma City. Uh, we asked her if she'd be able to join us at the Masters, and we're thrilled that uh, she was able to, to be able to join us. So we're very happy about that, Gladys. Thank you, Jim. I'm very honored. Thank you. Thank uh, you. I like to start these things off to find out uh, about your, your artistic background. So would you share with us uh, your story about your creative upbringing? Well, uh, growing up, I, like you said, I grew up in Monterrey, uh, Mexico, in a place called San Pedro Garza Garcia, and uh, with my parents, of course, but um, my, I always showed interest in art. I was always creating something, and I begged for classes, so my mom would take me to the little, you know, local teachers and get some classes in the summers or whenever it was available, but when I did approach my dad and I asked that, well, I would like to study art as a profession, I found that my dad was not very excited about that. <laughs> he said to me, you know, you seem to have some kind of intelligence and uh, uh, you got to use that <laughs> in some other way, but not in art. You don't, and unfortunately, that was the way he thought uh, back then. And so he did not approve of that. So I decided to go into something that would be eventually very creative and, and that's how I got into medical school, trying to get into plastic surgery someday. Okay. So that's uh, that's kind of like the route I took. But meanwhile, I was taking classes, you know, with as many teachers I could find anywhere. But, okay. So you're uh, you're you're now in the Masters of the American West. You're in the um, uh, in the Briscoe Knot of Artists. I, do I correctly understand that you've been invited to uh, join the Prado West as well? Yes. Absolutely. Well, congratulations for that. So you're in you're in three of the most prestigious um, uh, Western art exhibitions in the world. Um, I'm, I'm also in the uh, uh, Quest for the West. At the oh, in the Quest for the West in Indianapolis at the Idle Jordan yeah. Museum. Yes, yeah, another very nice uh, uh, exhibition. So um, how tell us about how your professional career uh, uh, evolved. Well, it was very long. Um, so like I said, I always wanted to do art, but they had no support. My husband was, uh, back then we were, you know, uh, dating. He was finishing his PhD in the US and uh, he proposed to me, I was in medical school. I entered very young. I would not advise anybody to do that. <laughs> um, so he proposed to me and uh, I moved to Austin, UT and uh, finished another degree and he finished his. And I uh, started taking classes. Um, I did a minor in art. So I was still taking classes, but still towards medical school because I wanted, again, to continue in medical school that way. Then my husband was invited to teach at Texas Tech University. And I got into a graduate program, but I got pregnant. And one thing led to another where I did not want to pursue that anywhere anymore. And my husband said to me, well, you've always wanted to do art. Why don't you just do that? And I will support you. And that was almost 40 years ago. And I took it very seriously, finding the best teachers, even raising a young family. All, my kids grew up with me with uh, taking classes or teaching or going to workshops. So I found I would find the best teachers, take classes, and then we moved to San Antonio, continued here. There is a uh, 
an academy of art called the Copini Academy. Um, I uh, studied a lot. There was a lot of uh, uh, teachers that, I mean, artists that would come and give workshops and, and, you know, being married to a professor, it's not like you have all the funds. So I decided to teach a beginning class and I started to teach uh, beginners and I could fund and, and uh, pay for my bills to get in more into more workshops. And I was able to find amazing mentors and teachers that helped me all the way. And uh, I taught for on and off for about 25 years here at the yeah. Copini until it just got too busy in my artwork trying to supply galleries and invitations to shows and very blessed to have been awarded many, many, uh, I mean, not many, but several great awards. So my career, although I can, you know, I can tell you about it in such a quickly, it was a lot of years, a lot of years of study and a lot of years of going at night to life drawing teaching during the day. I used to teach four classes in a day from eight in the morning to nine at in the in the evening. So and I think that teaching helped me a lot and I enjoy it a lot. I just don't have the time anymore, but I really enjoy sharing what other people have shared with me. You know, so I enjoy that and mentoring artists too. So it's been long and uh I'm I don't think I've learned everything. Every time, the more I paint, the more I realize I have so much more to wor you know, work on and learn. So I'm always, always learning. And I am a big bookworm, like a lot of us artists. But I have a huge library that I constantly am researching and const uh, you know, get getting my inspiration from. Well, certainly, uh, certainly you're, you're gaining recognition with being part of these uh, very top tier museum exhibitions uh, where the very finest artists are there. The uh, the most important collectors are there, uh, and uh, your work is is extremely distinctive. There's very few people that have done work like you. Uh, why don't we now um, uh, go on to uh, your work? You you've you've got one work in the show this year. Hopefully next year you'll have time to provide some more. But as yeah. Fiesta Shara in San Antonio, uh, tell us about uh, tell us the story of that work, please. Well. Um... As you know, Jim, I'm trying to portray my culture in Western art, my the traditions. And it's funny that you, you know, I'm very blessed to be able to live here in this great nation. But I, I think it happens to all of us that we sometimes we miss some of where we came from, be it Europe, being, you know, South and Central America. So when I moved here, um, I really had... And, and because San Antonio is such a Hispanic city, it's beautiful because for me, for that, I appreciated even more my culture. And I thought I want to represent my culture in contemporary Western art. And I want to do it with total respect the way it should be. Because when, let's say, a man, which I'm, I'm known to paint uh, a lot of the charreada, the, the national sport of Mexico, and I'll get to that in a minute. But when a man dresses as a charro, they dress as Mexico. It's with great respect right. that I try and and paint that. I So when I paint women, if it's escaramuzas or if it's adelitas or if it's chinas poblanas, I go into the research because there is a lot of rules and regulations. You just uh, You don't just paint a woman on a horse with a dress. I am very respectful to the rules of the Federación Mexicana de Charrería that puts out rules of how the dresses have to be, how they need to be worn, how they have to be portrayed. And I try to be as authentic because I want my paintings to be here for the long run. You know, when people uh, look at them and see some, some the history. So in that charreada, that charreada took place in San Antonio during a wonderful festivities that is called Fiesta uh, Fiesta in San Antonio, and it takes place every year in April. Um, it, it it evolved from the Battle of the Flowers and all of that, but they have one of the events is a charreada. And now the, the important thing about this charreada, because I got people online telling me, hey, why do you have an American flag there? Well, the reason, and I wanted to put the American flag there because it took place in the United States. So uh, the teams came from Mexico and from the United States. It's the procession of the of the flags, and they come in like that. So that right there tells you 
it's in the United States. Now, a lot of people don't realize that many of the paintings that I do, many, not all of them, have, have taken a place here in the United States. Um, for example, I'm known mostly to paint the women on horses, the national female sport of Mexico, Las Escaramuzas. But a lot of people don't know that there are over 15, or maybe even more, states that have these uh, uh, charreadas uh, with the presentation of the Escaramuzas in the United States. And they are, I admire them tremendously because they follow all the guidelines of the, the Mexican Federation of uh, Charreria, but then they have to compete and compete until right. they get the best ones. And then those best ones go back to Mexico to compete. And they do this for the love of the art and the love of the tradition. So I wanted to capture that event that is very unique uh, to, to San Antonio because it's fiesta, although there's many lians or charros all over the United States, like I said, but that is the event. So it's the procession. Um, so the women have lined up around the rodeo. Uh, they have come in and they salute it. There's always a beautiful song that's always played, La Marcha Zacatecas. And then the teams come in uh, and they represent the two, the, uh, the, the, the two great nations. So that's why, uh, to me, I wanted to, to capture that, that time and you know, moment in, in time of that event. Yeah, you not, you not only totally captured the procession and captured the teams that are, are standing to the side that are, are prepared to go through the competition, but you also captured the excitement of the audience in the in the arena. Uh, and it's really a, a, an amazing work. Uh, it looks really, really amazing in person. I was just over at the Autry the other day and I saw it for the first time in person. So um, thank you. Thank um, you. Uh, it, it's, it's fabulous. So um, how do you know what you want to um, what you want to conceptualize, what you want to create in your in your next work of art? Well, <clears throat> at this point in my career, having having done what I've done of uh, painting all these women on horses, which I felt, I kind of like fell into it without even noticing. I had a uh, great friend and mentor that I used to study with him and, he, and, I, and I would say, well, I need to find something, you know, that I am known for. I, you know, I don't want to be painting what everybody's painting. You want to find your voice. And I remember him saying to me, Gladys, paint what you love. And um, so one day I was studying a great artist that I admire tremendously, uh, Joaquin Sorolla y La Bastida. Mm -hmm. And um, I thought, oh, I would like to go to Andalusia and paint uh, El Festival de la Feria de los Caballos, the, the fair of the horses. And that. But I couldn't do that. And then I started thinking, oh, wait a minute, let's the Mexican women on horses. And then it all went back to my grandfather, um, which is very interesting how, you know, how things evolve. But if I can tell you a little bit of uh, me growing up in Mexico, my grandfather uh, was a industry owner, but he also was a great charro. One of his uh, ranches was called Rancho El Charro. And uh, he passed away maybe when I was about three or four years old. So I only have very, very slight memories of him, but I do remember going into my grandmother's house and opening closets like children do and go be nosy and opening these closets full of outfits of charros. And I could hear the belts uh, slamming against the, the, the doors and, and look, and I was like, what is this? And the boots and the belts and the uh, outfits and the jackets. And I didn't know, and I could see the photos of my grandfather on horses in, in these in these ranches. Um, so when I thought about painting women on horse, I thought, oh, las charrerias, like my grandfather. So I looked for a local one and I went and I started painting them. That brought to me, um, the first time, one of the first times I did submit a big painting to a show, which was to the Impressionist Society, and I won uh, Best in Show with that. Mm -hmm. So people immediately told me, well, you're a Western artist, because I had been doing some of those. Then I realized, uh, talking to my family in, in, Mont in Monterrey, that they told me, well, did you know that your grandfather was a, one of the important men that helped make charreria the national sport of Mexico? 
Hmm. And he's quoted in the museums in, in Monterey. And so I thought, never would I have thought about it. And then it's interesting because when I got married, uh, you know, I come from a very traditional family. My grandmother, of all things, gave me an outfit that was her dress that she used to wear, right. um, which is right behind me, this China Poblana right here. And I was like, why would she give me this? This, you know, it's not something we wear or whatever. She gave it to me. And then I just recently was able to get an, one of my grandfather's outfits. So without knowing, I gave it, I realized that I was, a, I was approaching a subject that was very dear to my grandfather. And I started to even love it more. And I wanted to learn more about it and more. And, uh, and here I am trying to do that. And then, um, uh, I had been doing a lot of uh, Hispanic subjects. So I, that is all I do because that is what I know. I can recognize when somebody's painted a mariachi on a horse instead of a charro on a horse. You know, I right. can, just like so many West, great Western artists and collectors can recognize what outfits go with what era, I can recognize what goes with what. So I'm sticking to that subject. <laughs> well, good for you. And, you know, you're, you're correct. Many... Many artists, and particularly many of the artists in the Masters of the American West, uh, are 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 very uh, they're very serious about the the historical aspect of the work that they represent, whether it's whether it's Western, whether it's Native American, um, uh, and um, uh, they they put a huge amount of research as you do and yes. study into uh, into their work, and it's really reflected in the authenticity of the work when it when it comes out. Let me ask you one last thing. Um, over the course of your career, has your has your process of creating your art uh, gone through an evolution? Has it changed over time? Uh, yes, it has because I used to, well, as all of, many of us, I guess, artists, we start painting from life. And uh, at least I was trained in painting, drawing from life, painting from life and constantly. And I taught that for many years. And uh, Right now, I find myself that I have to use more and more references unless I'm doing something like I have a model here in the studio or out somewhere. But because I'm painting more complex scenes, I cannot paint from life that much. I will. I, I tr always have with me my little Peshat box, my painter's box, tiny six by eight, tr goes with me everywhere. And I open it up and get some notes uh, that I'm colors I'm seeing that I don't want to forget or reflections or whatever. But yes, so, uh, you know, that is the truth. I used to paint solely from life. I don't do it that much, but I keep going back to it. I always paint from life at least once a week because, you know, the camera doesn't capture what I right. can see. So I am I try as much as I can to do that. And I encourage all my, uh, you know, friends and to do that too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in fact, if you... Uh, if if you're either an artist or a collector that has a seasoned eye, you can almost automatically tell if something's painted from an image versus something is painted from life. I mean, there's just a difference in in the way that the whole depth of field is is presented and the the color gamut and and all of that. So yeah, and just like a lot of my uh, friend art, uh, you know, Western artists, we do use different techniques to incorporate different photographs and create a scene. You know, that is something that. Um, I was just telling uh, one of my uh, uh, dear friends, we were talking about Sorolla. My friend lives in Spain. And I was telling him, well, if you look through his books, he was doing little drawings and then he was sticking them on on a card, a piece of cardboard trying to get the design to. So we're just doing it on a computer, trying to figure out what works. And, you know, yeah. so, yeah. So yes, to answer your question, yes, it has. Uh, sometimes I wish I... I just had the time to paint from life, but I'm very grateful to be uh, right now in demand. So I, I don't have that time right yeah. now. But maybe. well, we're we're certainly glad that you had the time to to give us this beautiful painting, and um, I thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us today, share a little bit about your your story, and hope that uh, we'll see you at the end of the month at the uh, Masters of the American West as well. Thank you so Absolutely. much. I'm very excited, very excited to be there. Thank you. Thank you.